And, and you have to, frankly. Uh -huh. Otherwise, they find out it's you and they charge you more money, and nobody wants to pay more money. This admission, after the presumptive GOP nominee, denied reports he has posed as his own publicist under names like John Miller and John Barron. Sarah Murray was not a Trump alias, but we thank her for that report. Fewer people sought unemployment aid last week, second week in a row. The latest evidence of solid hiring, the Labor Department data, suggests the economy is picking up after barely expanding in the first quarter of the year. And now, a touching moment while staying in touch with GEICO. It was a warm summer day. I was just sitting on a porch watching a babbling brook roll by. Then, out of the blue, I got an update from my GEICO app saying my claim had been processed. I felt so connected to nature, to Geico. <laughs> I stayed there the whole afternoon until that guy told me to stop trespassing on his porch. Sheesh, what was his problem? Claim status updates just a few taps away on the Geico app. Have you heard? Proactive Plus is faster and better than ever. Stay tuned for a million bottle giveaway and you'll also receive free shipping. With Proactive Plus, your acne can heal and you can help prevent new breakouts. Don't miss this limited time offer. We're going to let a million people try Proactive Plus risk-free and get two free gifts and also receive free shipping when you call right now. Call 800-393-6272. That's 800-393-6272. Attention gun owners. A gun trust can keep your family safe from becoming accidental felons and protect your privacy, at least until July 13th, when new laws go into effect. InterVivo's law firm can help with your legal questions. Speak with attorney Garrett Smith and find out what you can do about it. 801-477-1570. And be sure to mention KTALK for your free legal consultation. Gun laws affecting privacy of gun owners are changing on July 13th. It's urgent. Call now, 801-477-1570. That's 801-477-1570. Again, welcome back to K-Talk Inside the News. This is your host, Paul Jensen, and the hour has come that we look forward to every week, the Alex Newman program, the Alex Newman Hour, here on K-Talk, where we have the foreign correspondent for the New American Magazine. He's an educator. He's a speaker. He's a, uh, a guest on many, many national uh, programs, television and radio, and uh, a historian. Glad to have you with us this morning. Alex. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Thanks very much for having me, Paul. You bet. Hey, listen, uh, a couple of things. I've got to finish up a call from last hour that's been waiting over all the way. I think he wants to talk about you, Tom. Maybe you can give us some insight on that as well. Go ahead, Tom. What's your, your uh, question, your comment this morning? Yeah, well, I was going to say, okay, you have every right in the world to criticize, okay, America. But but the thing is, one thing that really irritates me about you, you never criticize the corruption right here in your own state of Utah. Yeah, I, I never hear you do that. All you ever do is attack America over and over and over again. Why don't you, if you want to be a good citizen, why don't you help to clean up your own backyard? Okay, good, uh, good call, Tom. Thanks uh, for calling. And we do talk about Utah. You obviously don't listen enough. But we're not criticizing. We're pointing out, and I do criticize the actions. I love America. America is the greatest country ever that has uh, come upon the face of this planet. It is not America that we are criticizing. It's obviously the corrupt politicians. What do you think about that, Alex? I think you're absolutely right, Paul. I think it's so important to make a distinction between the political class and the country. You know, when people say America did this, America did that, no, it didn't. You know, we have um, a class, uh, you know, I call it the uni party now, the, the Republican establishment and the Democrat party acting as one. And that, I think, needs to be the focus of our criticism, and President Obama, and of course the Supreme Court. But it's very important to distinguish between government and society, between government and a nation. Um, you know, we don't hate uh, the people of Iraq or the people of Syria because they have a bad dictator. We don't hate 
uh, the people of Zimbabwe because they live under a tin pot dictatorship. We don't hate the people of Cuba because they live under a tin pot dictatorship. But we can still criticize these dictatorships without actually saying anything about the people. And I think that's a, a confusion that uh, leftists have almost instinctively, right? They, they blur the lines between the government and the people and the society and the nation. Yeah, as a matter of fact, that's what we entities. talked about, Alex, in the first hour. We talked about the people at the, at the, uh, at the citizen level, at the general population level. They're good people. We love that. And we, right. we, we reported that. We even talked, and, and I guess the listener wasn't listening first hour because we talked almost exclusively for a full 20-minute segment regarding Utah, regarding our representatives here, regarding Chaffetz and Mia Love and, and Chris Cannon, I mean Chris Stewart and, and uh, Rob Bishop and others and things that are going on inside of this state. We're not, uh, I love Utah. I, I, could, I could leave Utah if I wanted to and live anywhere else. I have lived in other places, but I love it here. It's a great place to live, a great place to raise a family, beautiful mountains, beautiful weather, beautiful seasons uh, that are changing. But to say that uh, we do not criticize Utah, I'm not criticizing Utah. I'm criticizing corruption in government what, at whatever level it is at, and I'm exposing it. So uh, uh, we like Tom. We like his calls, but sometimes he gets a little angry and, and maybe doesn't listen enough to know what we, we really do here. But, uh, you know, I've got, a vi- I've got a video that I played just a— uh, 30 seconds of in the first hour that comes right in in line with some of the things we were talking about and this has to do with fast and furious for one p- part of this but the the other part of this has to do with uh, criminal aliens are being released by the department of homeland security and ice back into the public rather than deported out of the country and the excuses that are given by the people who are representing the Department of Homeland Security, and again, I'm not talking Ameri- about America here, Alex. I'm talking about those who are trying to corrupt America, who are trying to take That's away exactly America. Right. Yep. And you know, the the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence are really what separates America from other countries. So, if the political class in Washington D.C. or in our state capitals is veering away from those ideas. I mean, that's what America really is, right? We're, di- we're different as a nation than, say, France. You know, it's filled with French people, or Germany, it was filled with German people, right? I mean, these are nations in a different sense. Our nation is based on the Declaration of Independence, on the Constitution, on this idea that we all have God-given rights. And so to criticize the political class for trying to destroy those ideas or for trying to veer our country off course um, is, is basically the opposite of criticizing America. It, you know, it's such a strange argument to hear that. And I do hear that sometimes from leftists. You know, they think they're going to score some political points by saying, oh, you're blaming America. Uh, you know, no such thing. It, it's preposterous. And, you know, it's really, frankly, it's silly. I like, oh, you, good, very good comment, Alex. Let's, uh, let's hear what uh, Jason Chaffetz has to say. Preparing for this hearing is one of been, has, uh, I, I'm telling you, it's hard to keep your cool in preparing for this meeting. And let me tell you the heart of why we're here today. Immigrations, immigration customs enforcement. I have met with the men and women who work there, the wonderful, hardworking, dedicated people who do a hard and difficult job. But I got to tell you, what's going on at Homeland Security, what's going on with immigration customs enforcement is one of the most infuriating things I think I've seen in this government yet. In a three-year period, Immigrations and Customs Enforcement has released more than 86,000 criminal aliens into the, into the American public. These are people that were here illegally, got caught committing a crime, were convicted of that crime, and then instead of deporting them, they were just released back out in the United States of America. All told, they had more than 231,000 crimes that they were convicted of. 86,000 of these people. In 2015, 196 of these people were convicted of homicide and ICE released them back into the public rather than deporting them. 124 of those that were released between fiscal year 2010 and 2015 went on to commit homicide. Let me give you some other stats. In 2013, ICE released 36,007 criminal aliens, criminal aliens, 
who were here, who were here unlawfully in, in, in present in the United States. As of September 2014, 5,700 of those individuals went on to commit additional crimes. In March of 2015, ICE Director Sarah Saldana testified before this committee that during fiscal year 2014, ICE released another 30,000 individuals with criminal convictions. In fact, ICE released 30,558 criminal aliens in 2014 who had a combined 79,059 convictions instead of deporting them. Of those 30,558 criminal aliens, 1,895 were charged with another crime following their release. Their convictions included sex offenses, assault, burglary, robbery, driving under the influence. And ICE told us that in 2015, the agency released 19,723 criminal aliens with a combined 64,197 convictions, including 934 sex offenses, 804 robberies, 216 kidnappings, and 196 homicide-related convictions. And that's on your watch. They were under, they were here illegally, they got caught committing a crime, they were convicted of the crime, and instead of following the law and deporting them, you release them back out of the public and they commit more crimes. How do you look those people in the eye? How do you go back to a family and say, you know, they were in our detention and we just thought it would be better to let them out into the United States of America? That is so wholly unacceptable. I want to show you this football stadium. This is Notre Dame football stadium. You okay, he, he shows the, the Notre Dame football stadium is just packed with tens of thousands of people. And, and t talking to this Soldania, the uh, spokesperson for the Department of Homeland Security, she's already been singled out several times. Under whose marching orders, Alex, are you people releasing these people out into the general public? They, he goes on to talk about the fact that they had more than adequate time to vet these people and to arrange for their deportation. She said, well, wait a minute, we couldn't do that. We didn't have enough time. He says, you had, uh, there, are, there are other instruments for deporting them out of the country, you never tried to seek one of those uh, solutions. What is your thoughts on, on that uh, video and, and on the policy of the United States to take convicted felons who are here illegally and commit crimes released into the public? And as you heard, another of those that were released in that uh, time period they were talking about, whether it was one year or the, or the three years, 124 of those people committed additional homicides, murder. What are your yep, thoughts? Well, you know, it, it, it's so sad, Paul. It's, it's really just so sad. It makes you want to cry. But unfortunately, it goes along very well with the theme that I've been uh, developing in recent weeks and months, and I plan to write on further in the future. And that's that there is a war against America being waged right now by elements in Washington, D.C., and I think the Obama administration is a key component of that. And, I mean, what possible explanation could you give for, first of all, not Reporting people who you know are here illegally, and second of all, people who you know have been convicted of crimes. It's just crazy. It suggests to me that they want more crime in our communities. They want to fundamentally transform our nation. They want to use crisis and violence and chaos that they're unleashing on us as a means to an end. They, you know, they have uh, this philosophy, you know, you use chaos and crisis to expand your power, to do things you couldn't do before, you know. Um, Obama's chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, uh, put it very well. He says you, you need to exploit the crises and, and do things that you couldn't do before. I think that's what they're up to here. There's absolutely no sensible reason why they would do this. They're certainly not saving taxpayers any money. You know, you have to uh, deal with the crimes. You have to deal with the victims of the crimes. You have to put them back through the court system. So, you know, there's absolutely no excuse for this. And to me, it, it actually sounds criminal. It sounds like the government is perpetrating crimes here rather than obeying the law and enforcing the law and, and upholding the Constitution and the laws of the United States, which they were all sworn to do, they're doing the opposite. They're waging war on the rule of law and on uh, law and order in this country. It, it's it just grotesque. takes my breath away. We reported on Fast and Furious, a new report out uh, by uh, Judicial Watch, uh, that there are 69 uh, murders tied to the Fast and Furious weapons, but there, uh, there are over 200 murders that they know exist, but they've actually tied 69 of those to the actual weapons. Uh, we have Scott on the line. He's been waiting to go on the air. Go ahead, Scott. Uh, what's yeah, your good morning. This morning. Good morning. Uh, hey, Jason Chaffetz can grandstand all he likes, and if he can 
uh, impeach people or bring federal prosecution, great. But I got a uh, much more practical suggestion on this. If it's known uh, which Homeland Security or ICE or whatever agents released criminals uh, in Utah or released criminals that subsequently came to Utah and committed felonies, prosecute them. Uh, if they don't, if they're out of state and they don't want to show up, fine. You can still prosecute them in absentia. Um, uh, I would think the same thing should apply uh, to Fast and Furious and other incidents of that sort. Uh, but Utah needs uh, to prosecute these guys for aiding and abetting uh, criminal acts against Utah and the people in Utah. Uh, and if the feds demand uh, taking it uh, to, to federal appeal, tell them, no, you committed a crime against us, he stays in jail. Or at least uh, the conviction in absentia stands, and if he ever shows up in Utah, uh, we'll put him in jail. Okay, uh, good, good, thank, uh, good comments. Uh, thanks, bye. Thanks for calling this morning. Uh, listen, we've got a break coming up in 10 seconds, Alex, and we've got a couple of other callers, but let's go ahead and pursue this and a couple of other topics we have on the agenda for this morning as we per, pursue the we pursue the the uh now well, what do you call it i guess the pursuit for for truth and uh we're trying to bring that to you we're trying to get uh information and education out you've suggested that several times alex that what we the best one of the best things we can do uh is get the information out to the people and and then maybe help them decide the best way to pursue that information but just the education alone is is a, is a very uh laudable goal don't you think oh absolutely you know it, it, i think it's maybe the single most important thing we can do as americans is educate our fellow americans and build an informed electorate to turn back the tide of this evil okay uh let's go to this break and you can call us here at a one two five four five eight five five eight zero one two five four fifty eight fifty five. Quality public education is vital to Utah's future, and it starts with parents and teachers working together, not faraway bureaucrats and one-size-fits-all programs. Sadly, this is exactly what Governor Herbert has brought Utah with Common Core, SAGE testing, and by giving the Federal Secretary of Education veto power over Utah's education plan. His message to Utah parents and teachers? Bureaucrats know better than you. This is wrong. On the other hand, Jonathan Johnson, Republican candidate for governor, and his running mate, Robin Bagley, are committed to ending the Common Core mandate and SAGE testing, to ensuring local control and a voice for Utah parents, to reducing needless bureaucracy and empowering teachers, and to finding ways to increase teacher salaries. Utah can and must do education better. To learn more details about Jonathan's education plan, visit HireJJ.com. Paid for by Johnson for Governor. Get set to save now at your local Kubota dealer. Kubota RTVX Series is the best-selling diesel utility vehicle in the industry, according to Power Products Marketing North American Utility Vehicle Market Reports, May 2014. Get long-term financing as low as 0% APR for four years on new Kubota RTVX utility vehicles. Now through June 30th, 2016. Call toll-free 1-888-465-8268 for details about costs and terms. Visit Sunset Kubota and Bonneville Equipment or find your local Kubota dealer online at utahkubotadealers.com. It's another Retirement Minute with Manny. Where does your financial professional focus his attention? On your assets or on you? Well, Manny Negron is a financial professional experienced in creating retirement income strategies. He spends most of his day figuring out what really matters to his clients. How do they want to use their money? What's most important to them? Once Manny has a clear picture, it's easier to select an appropriate product, whether it be investment or insurance. That's what Manny does. He has more products to choose from than advisors who aren't independent. Get a copy of the complimentary retirement preparation kit that Manny shares with all of his clients. Sign up at retirewithmanny.com. Again, that's retirewithmanny.com. Gen Wealth Advisory Group is an independent financial services firm helping individuals create retirement strategies using a variety of investment and insurance products to custom suit their needs and objectives. Flag Day is June 14th and Colonial Flag is celebrating in a big way. 
K-Talk will be there broadcasting live. The Food Truck Underground is sending three food trucks, and Colonial Flag is giving away flags, desserts, and other goodies. It's a celebration you don't want to miss. So mark your calendars, June 14th at Colonial Flag in Sandy. Good morning, folks. Welcome back to K-Talk. Inside the news, we're on the Alex Newman Hour here at uh, every Thursday afternoon. Glad to have you with us this morning, Alex. Thanks very much, Paul. It's great to be with you. Hey, listen, uh, we've got a caller, and then I've got a couple of other topics I really would like to talk about. I think uh, that Julie wants to talk about uh, the, the things that we're on topic with this morning. Go ahead, Julie. Your questions Hello? and comments. Hello. Yes, I just wanted to say that the information you're bringing is just unbelievable, but we all need to hear it. And I just want to say quickly that we, I, and in my opinion, it's everything that you've said and Alex has said, and it is the, uh, to me, it is the terrorist enemy, civil disobedience army within, in our own borders, trained, imported, released, waiting for their call to action. And maybe they were already called to action in Baltimore and New Mexico and other places. And that's why they don't send, that's why they don't deport them. And I want to say that in the same time, all of we, we need to look at the, the Lavoy Finnegan family, the Cliven Bundy family, the Hammond family, and other American citizens that were down at the Bundy family who are now in jail and not released, even with no criminal records, to see what they have in store for American citizens. Good, uh, good call, good comment. Uh, uh, your, your comments to uh, Julie's call. Alex? You know, I, I think there's a lot to that, and I think, uh, you know, there is a very sinister agenda behind what's going on here, and I think the contrast is, that she just offered is perfect. You know, look at what they've done to, for example, ranchers who've engaged in nonviolent civil disobedience to try to protect their rights, and, you know, look at what they've done to hardworking American middle-class men and women who work in logging or mining or ranching or, you know, any kind of industry, and then compare the, you know, they put them in jail, they persecute them, they try to steal their land, and then compare that to what they do with people who have been uh, found to be here illegally, convicted of a crime by a jury, and then they just release them back on the street. So something is not right with that. And I also wanted to touch on something that uh, the previous caller touched on before uh, we went to the break, and that's the idea of state and local prosecutors uh, taking some of these federal officials to task. I think there is definitely something to that. I know uh, there's some efforts in Michigan underway right now. Uh, you know, every state is different. Every state has different criminal laws. But uh, the ones that I have looked at have no exception for, you know, federal officials purporting to be engaged in official duties. So if they commit crimes, uh, and, you know, there are lots of crimes being committed here under the color of law, under the color of doing official duties, um, then our state prosecutors, our state attorneys general, have a duty to prosecute these people, whether they're, you know, Obama agents or not, makes absolutely no difference in all of the state laws that I've looked at. No exception for federal officials purporting to be doing official duties. And actually, Utah is one of the states where there are some serious investigations going on by state and local prosecutors of some very shady federal business involving people like Harry Reid. So I think that's something to be encouraged. I think the American people should ask their state prosecutors to look into these kinds of things because, uh, you know, the states, the way our system of government was set up was that our states were meant to serve as a counterbalance to the federal government. The idea was if, if the federal government ever got out of control, well, the states were to serve as a check, right? The states created the federal government. The federal government is the agent of the states. The creature cannot be superior to the creator. And so the states are meant to serve as a check on abuses coming out of Washington, D.C. Today, these abuses are coming out fast and furious, and it's like an avalanche of abuses. And the state governments need to stand up and say, enough, we're going to draw a line in the sand. We're not going to, you know, worry about your little federal bribes and your threat to, you know, cut off funding for our government schools if we don't let uh, men into the girls' bathroom. Uh, and it's time to say enough. So, Wow, good comment. Uh you know, I have a question about uh, Europe real quickly. Uh, I actually had a, a someone who texted me a question, and, and you wrote an article about it. <laughs> and the article you wrote, it, you wrote is how the TTIP threatens U.S. sovereignty and self-government. A person asked me that exact same question. Well, how does – I keep hearing that the TTIP on your program – you keep talking about how the TTIP, the TPP, the, the uh, Fast Track, all of these different uh, agreements 
are actually a threat to our Constitution, and how are they really? It's not that the person didn't agree. They just, uh, as a matter of fact, went on to say, I tried to explain to some of my friends who uh, looked looked at me like I had a, a mustache on, on my forehead. And so uh-huh. they. Uh, the, the question is, is how does the TTIP uh, threaten U.S. sovereignty, the Constitution, and our self-governance? Uh, That's an excellent question, and I think it's one that everybody should be familiar enough with to talk to their friends and their family and their legislators and their state representatives and their congressmen about. And so uh, I'm delighted to have the chance to talk about this a little bit. Uh, I did do a video on this uh, for The New American, and I've done a number of articles on this topic, so if people want more details, they can go there. Uh, You know, some of the documents have now been leaked out, so we have kind of a smoking gun here. Um, But, you know, to, to try to kind of condense it, what these pseudo-free trade agreements do, and I call them pseudo-free trade because, first of all, this isn't free trade, right? You don't need thousands of pages of regulation to have free trade. You just say a person in America can buy something from a person in Mexico or Canada, and you don't need uh, you know, thousands of pages of regulations and transnational courts and bureaucracies to oversee all that. You know, that's the opposite of free trade. But what these agreements do, uh, under the guise of free trade, is create supranational institutions. And by that I mean institutions that are above and superior to the United States government, uh, the American people, uh, and are, of course, our state governments, which are supposed to be, uh, you know, sovereign in a sense. So, and this has already happened, mind you, the, you know, the TTIP and the TTP or the TPP with the Trans-Pacific Partnership, these will add new layers of transnational institutions with the power to rule Americans without our consent, without any way to remove them. But these things have already happened. Uh, I'll give you some examples. NAFTA creates uh, these transnational kangaroo courts that ensnare the United States, Mexico, and Canada. These courts have consistently ruled against Americans. Now, they've overruled our state courts, our federal courts, and they've said, nope, we're the NAFTA court and you have to obey. And there's no way to challenge these decisions. Even the Supreme Court supposedly cannot uh, contest these transnational decisions because these courts were created by treaties. You also have the World Trade Organization. And there was just a, a very recent example of this just a few months ago. Uh, some World Trade Organization kangaroo court ruled that uh, the U.S. government did not have any authority to require um, meat from foreign countries to be labeled with a country of origin. Uh, they said, no, it's, you know, it's against World Trade Organization rules for the U.S. government. Congress, in this case, passed a law saying that if you bring in meat from China, you need to write on there that it's coming from China. If you bring it from Vietnam, you need to write that it's coming from Vietnam. So this World Trade Organization court ruled against our law. And uh, so what did Congress do? Well, they quickly got together, and this under Republican leadership, mind you, they got together and they said, okay, okay, well, we'll quick, we'll abolish that law. And so now we don't get to know if our meat or our fish or our chicken is coming from China. So this is grotesque, right? The Founding Fathers never envisioned a system in which we would have transnational courts overruling the sovereign will of the American people as expressed to their elected representatives. This is an absolute abuse of power. It's absolutely illegitimate. But it's going on. It's happening right now. And the TTIP and the TPP are going to massively expand this. Um, we can break down each one. I don't know how much time we have. The TTIP, and some of these documents have already been leaked, uh, creates transatlantic institutions. So it's going to harmonize uh, bureaucratic regulations on all kinds of fields, right? Labor, environment, uh, consumer safety, all kinds of other nonsense. And you're going to have transnational bureaucracies making these sorts of decisions. So what if you don't like these decisions? What are you going to do? You're going to write to your congressman? What is he going to do? Nothing, because they can't do anything. Right? These bureaucracies would be beyond the control of the American people. Um, you're also going to have these transatlantic courts. Uh, you need, of course, someone to enforce these transatlantic regulations and decrees, and so that's going to be these transatlantic courts. Exact same thing you have with the TPP. Now, they don't call them courts, right? They call them uh, tribunals, and uh, you know they have all sorts of different tribunals where uh, investors can sue taxpayers in the state of Florida or the state of Utah or the state of Minnesota if they pass some law that the, those companies don't like. And if this transnational court rules against the people of Minnesota or the people of Utah, tough. There's nothing you can do about it, right? These courts are superior to, or purport to be superior to, our own institutions. Now, what this does, it's essentially going to serve as 
the nucleus for the global system that they're building, right? This is not happening only in the United States and Europe and the Pacific region. This is happening all over the world. Uh, in the European Union, they use this exact same process that they're using here in the United States with the NAFTA, with the TTIP, and the TPP to set up these transnational institutions. They said, hey, we'll have some nice free trade, and won't that be great, and we'll uh, you know, start reducing tariffs, and we'll just create a few little transnational institutions to kind of make sure the free trade works smoothly. Now what do we have? But look at Europe. You have uh, the so-called president of the European Union running around demanding that uh, they become a federal government, that they have veto power over national budgets. Something like 80 percent of the laws that govern Europeans now come from the European Union, come from Brussels. And this is not uh, even lawmaking in the sense that we understand it. Yeah, they have a European parliament, but it's very much like the Soviet parliament. It's kind of a rubber stamp. The laws come out of the European Commission, which is the executive branch where they have tens of thousands of bureaucrats working away in there. Nobody knows who they are. Nobody knows what they're doing, coming up with hundreds and hundreds of laws. Nobody has any clue what's going on here, and yet everybody is expected to submit to these laws. So they use the exact same process. They lied to the Europeans. They told them this was about free trade. Then once the trap uh, was ready to be sprung, boom, now you live under a federal super state where you have no ability to control what's going on, we're going to surrender, uh, you know, every last little shred of your sovereignty. And uh, that's the end of the story. If you don't like it, tough. You can't vote us out. You can't do anything. So that's exactly what's happening here. And, you know, this is, again, it's not isolated to the Western world. In Africa, uh, the European Union, the communist Chinese dictatorship, and the Obama administration are foisting what they call the African Union on the Africans. They're building up an African military, all of it, again, under the guise of free trade. Same thing, uh, Putin, Vladimir Putin in Russia is building his little Eurasian Union. Same thing, we're going to have some free trade here, so we need transnational institutions. Same thing in Latin America, South America, they have the Union of South American States. So this is going on all over the world, and this is part of an overall strategy that was actually outlined very recently by Henry Kissinger in his book, World Order. He said, first, you need to divide the world up into these regional governments, and then all of these regional governments need to submit to the international, the world order that they're building. So that's what's happening here. That's how it threatens our sovereignty. That's how it threatens our right to self-government. And once this gets you know, too far to the point where they think we can't reverse it, that's it. right? There's going to be no more U.S. Constitution. Well, There's going to be no more God-given rights. And, you know, it's interesting because uh, this move by uh, the U.K. to exit the European Union, which is one of their big regional operations that you're talking about, uh, this threatens to reverse the progress that they've made so far. I mean, I'm proud of the British people. I've, I've checked the polls there, and they are all over the place, so obviously many of them falsified. But it, the, what I've, I finally came to believe is that the uh, majority do not support uh, the U.K. being in the European Union, it has hurt them. It's taken away their freedoms. They've got these international courts. And when the, when the European Union decides to uh, make a, uh, a decree from the top, they don't check with anyone. They just make it law, uh, and people don't have any representation, no, uh, you know, no taxation without representation, no laws without representation. And, and they're feel, they feel like they've been railroaded. Many people have seen their businesses decrease. 300 businessmen got together and voted against staying in the European Union. They voted for, for Brexit, for the exit of the, of, uh, the U.K. out of it. Uh, how does this play in? I mean, you, you, there's a new movie out about this as well. I guess that you wrote a little bit of a, a, a review on. What is that? Uh, there is actually it's called Brexit the movie, and uh, yeah, it deals with uh, you know the British exit, the proposed British exit from the European Union. But I highly encourage Americans to watch it too because it'll give you a picture of the future where we're headed if we don't put a stop to this right now with the TTIP and the NAFTA and the TPP and World Trade Organization and all this nonsense. Uh, what it does is it essentially demolishes every claim made by the scaremongering establishment about what will happen if the U.K. leaves the European Union. They're telling them they're going to get poorer, that no one's going to want to trade with them. Uh, that World not War III. The right, World War III, that's the new one. I know the other the scaremongering tactics work, so now they said World War III. Um, but, it, you know, it's clear that the establishment is bordering on the unhinged now. They're just saying anything they think might scare a few people into voting uh, to stay shackled to, uh, as the movie put it, a rotting Alex, corpse. Um, let me ask you a question. Let, let's continue with this topic. Before we do, I want to ask you a question about 
what is exactly on topic here. This is a sidebar question that also came into me by a text. It's now being widely reported that the Austrian elections were very much manipulated by the EU to keep a, a left-wing radical in office rather than the man who was obviously way ahead of the polls, and they would not even allow uh, polling, uh, exit polling to be done in the country. They outlawed it. They put officers to keep people from uh, exiting, doing exit polls to find out what really did happen. And now we're finding that voter fraud, election fraud, w is being widely claimed and reported. Is this another move by the European Union to try to keep the, the f their power base that is obviously falling apart, losing support? You saw, you've seen the euro uh, lose value, never had uh, the steam to keep up what, and, and a highly disrespected uh, currency now. D is, does this play into it as well, what's happening in these Austrian elections over in Europe? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. I, I actually have not looked into the legitimacy of the Austrian elections. I saw, you know, it was a razor-thin margin, something like 50.3% to 49.7%, which is a hallmark of the kind of manipulation and fraud that the establishment uses. But I think, you know, as a general principle, it's important to, for people to understand these globalists, this establishment, thinks nothing of murdering people, even murdering many, many, many people. So, you know, the idea that they uh, wouldn't commit vote fraud, that they have some moral scruples against rigging elections is ridiculous. Uh, we know that they've been rigging elections, uh, not just in the Western world, but all over the world, to keep their puppets in office and to keep uh, their fake unions together. If they lose the election, so badly that uh, you know there's absolutely no way they can turn it, uh, then they'll just ignore it. And we've seen this happen consistently in the European Union. And, uh, and Brazil uh, and uh, Venezuela. Exactly. <laughs> yep. And it's just, you know, Venezuela is a perfect example. It just happens over and over and over again. Um, and, I mean, people just need to get this through their head. These people kill people, right? They have no scruples about perpetrating horrible acts and atrocities to get their way. You know, they believe in this, you know, ends justifies the means type thing, and they think they're so much better and superior to us that they should run everything and we should submit. So they have no scruples whatsoever about rigging elections, and okay. people need in to understand including, that. Including the, the rigging of the EU Brexit election? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't think that's out of the question at all, if they think they can get away with it. If they don't think they can get away with it, I think they'll try to use this to their advantage anyway. Okay, because Alex, right now, you've got to go to a break. We'll be right back. Sorry to cut you short. New laws go into effect. Now. InterVivo's law firm can help with your legal questions. Speak with attorney Garrett Smith and find out what you can do about it. 801-477-1570. And be sure to mention KTALK for your free legal consultation. Gun laws affecting privacy of gun owners are changing on July 13th. It's urgent. Call now. 801-477-1570. That's 801-477-1570. I just met with my CPA and I'm pretty ticked off. He told me that I owe the Obamacare penalty of over $2,000 to the IRS on top of all my other taxes because I didn't have a qualified health plan last year. Andy tells me that the penalty is going to be even higher this year. Luckily, I'm not going to have to deal with that anymore. I decided to opt out of the whole Affordable Care Act, including the IRS penalties. How is that possible? I just heard about a medical cost-sharing organization, and as a member, I'm exempt to the ACA individual mandate and the IRS penalties. I do get to keep my doctor because there are no networks, no HMOs, no PPOs. I can go wherever I like. Best of all, I'm paying a lot less than I was for health care. You should check it out, too. All the information you need is at medicalcostshare.com. If it makes sense, you can even enroll online. It's so easy. Once again, medicalcostshare.com. I promise you'll be glad you did. Medicalcostshare.com. It's not health insurance. It's better. I'm increasingly frustrated with the growing tax burden on Utah families. Governor Herbert raised taxes six times since 2009, taking an additional $625 million out of the pockets of hardworking Utahns. When asked if he would sign a pledge to stop raising taxes, his answer was alarming when he replied. I, I can answer that and say no, because it's leadership. It's an economic engine. Let's all make it clear to Governor Herbert that taxing our dedicated workforce is not the government's economic engine, nor is it a sign of good leadership. On the other hand, Jonathan Johnson, Republican candidate for governor, signed a pledge promising Utahns he will not raise taxes. I encourage you to vote for a candidate who will stretch our tax dollars, 
not raise them again and again. Paid for by Johnson for Governor. Welcome back, folks. This is K-Talk. K-Talk Radio, 630 on the AM dial. You can also reach us, listen live. You can stream, download the apps. TuneIn is a good app also. And you can listen to us when uh, we've got tower problems or when you're not in the area. Or if you happen to be, be visiting Beijing, China, you can still listen to us. Welcome back, uh, Alex. Thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, we were cut off uh, by a, a commercial break that uh, I uh, just got by me there. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no problem at all. I, yeah, I love your sponsors. I love listening to the ads. There's some great stuff. Uh, but no, what I was saying was, you know, if it looks like the the establishment cannot swing this election, either through fear mongering and ridiculous propaganda, or just through outright voter fraud, you know, if it's if if it's so overwhelming that you know the exit polls would instantly reveal their fraud, um, you know, I think they'll try to use the Brexit to their advantage. One of the things that has kind of you know in, you know in a small way held the European Union back to whatever extent it's been held back in its quest for absolute power is the British people and the British people's refusal to just outright go along with all this. You know, a lot of the other countries, uh, they kind of uh, have gone along with it. They're not really paying attention. Uh, the countries that have tried to stop it have just kind of been run over. Right? The Czech president said the European Union was trying to crush freedom and self-government and democracy on the entire continent. Uh, you know, he was unceremoniously uh, evicted from office, and then they launched uh, phony investigations into him. But the British are a little bit harder, right? They have a thousand years of tradition of self-government and uh, inalienable rights, right? These guys came up with the Magna Carta. So it's been a lot harder with the British to co-opt them into this system. So if the British decide to leave with a Brexit, the European Union might seize the opportunity, steamroll over, you know, whatever remaining opposition exists on the continent, and then come and try to swallow up Britain later, or try to get Britain ensnared in some kind of transatlantic union. Or, uh, you know, the globalists, they shift tactics as appropriate, as needed, but their end goal remains the same. Get every nation in the world ensnared into these regional super blocks, and then turn these regional super blocks into what they themselves call uh, you know, what President George H.W. Bush went on television and told us was called the New World Order. Yes, uh, a little frightening. You know, I want to I change directions, if that's okay with you, Alex. I have a couple of questions. Let's talk just a, a moment, if we can, and then we'll try to also get to uh, what's going on, uh, a story you wrote about another intrusion, another uh, scary <laughs> situation going on in uh, Obama waging another undeclared illegal war in Libya. But before we get to that, I what about the current political campaigns? That's uh, Trump and, and uh, Clinton, uh, Mr. Bernie Sanders. Uh, if you want to if you want to see the results of Clinton and Bernie Sanders, uh, according to an article I just read, just take a look at Venezuela and what's going on there. Uh, oh, that's perfect. That's even, brilliant. I mean, Venezuela is a picture of our future if we continue on this path that Obama has led us on, that Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton want to lead us on. It's, listen, you know, they're feeling the burn down in Venezuela. So. Listen, I've, and I've got a question for you in that regard. Have you got an extra $170 you can loan me because I'm hungry and I need to get a hamburger in Venezuela while I'm there? The report right. came out yesterday that Venezuelan hamburgers, and they might be 180 today. That was yesterday. But the biggest one is that the, the, the corn meal used for making their uh, corn tortillas was raised. Did you read this story? In one day, uh, overnight, 900 percent. Already a country strapped to the point. Now, I guess that's the, uh, the socialist idea of, of a solution. Take a people that already can't even afford. Uh, there's no toilet paper. And people who are eating dogs and cats and birds in the streets of Caracas now we just raised the government has control of this industry they took over control all private control put into government hands and yesterday overnight they raised the prices 900 percent on the basic staple of the people who live in venezuela yeah and uh you know the people of venezuela like you said are actually starvation is returning to venezuela and people need to realize venezuela is one of the most materially wealthy countries on earth 
They have more oil reserves than Saudi Arabia. They have oil, they have diamonds, they have gold coming out their ears, and yet somehow socialism, big government, has managed to turn this country that could be one of the wealthiest in the world into such a basket case that people are literally eating their pets, people are starving, people are rioting outside of grocery stores because there's no food. The companies that printed their money, they used to print their money, have said, hey, we're not going to be printing any more money for you guys. You haven't paid us for the money that we printed for Even you last for time. the so paper. People- Right, exactly. They, I mean, it, the same thing happened with Zimbabwe, actually. Uh, the companies that were selling them the money to print the paper on, they said, you know what, sorry, we're not going to send you any more paper to print money on because you haven't paid us. You have to pay us in dollars or euros, or we're not uh, going to be sending you any more money. And so at that point, the currency collapsed. So now and, they're, uh, you know. the, uh, the president, Maduro, has now said that he's willing to trade oil for debt. He, if you'll take over some of the country's debt, he'll give you oil. Yeah, well, at this point, they're even going to have trouble extracting the oil because, uh, you know, their state-run industry, uh, Petróleos de Venezuela, the uh, PDVS, uh, whatever it is, the the state-run oil company, cannot actually, they don't have the know-how and the technology to be able to extract this oil. So actually, they rely on American companies to be able to get the oil out of the ground to keep the government coffers filled with money. And the American companies are saying, hey, you know, sorry, we don't want anything more to do with this. You guys owe us tons of money. You've been nationalizing our assets. You're on your own. And so, you know, Venezuela, again, has oil coming out of tears, but now they're not going to be able to get it out of the ground. So it's, you know, it's so disgraceful. It's so tragic. People are needlessly dying. Uh, Babies are dying in the hospital. They can't even get an aspirin, much less, uh, you know, proper medical care at the hospitals. People are literally dying. Babies are literally dying from lack of medical care, you know, stuff that should be so simple. And this is what it always leads to. You know, the, the socialists, the communists, the big government mongers that tell us, oh, no, they just did it wrong. You know, if you let us do it, it won't be like the Soviet Union. It won't be like the National Socialists in Germany. It won't be like Cuba. But every time, it ends in the same place, starvation, terror, uh, dictatorship. And, uh, you know, it's just it, it's so tragic to see it over and over and over again. And now we have, uh, you know, brainwashed zombies might not be the right term, but we have these waves of young Americans who've been indoctrinated in the government schools who are feeling the burn, right? They want to try out the same thing here. And you have got to be kidding me. Talk about playing with fire. Wow. Well, fantastic information. Uh, hope hope your listeners appreciate uh, what we're getting today. Uh, but having having said that, let's talk about the elections. There, a new poll out that uh, that uh, Gary Johnson, a candidate for uh, under the uh, Libertarian Party, is polling 11 percent versus Trump and Clinton, uh, and more and more people are turning to this option. Uh, now, there's a lot of things that people need to know about uh, Gary Johnson. Some people are saying he really isn't a true conservative. But there are some things that he is in favor for. Of, For example, he is uh, in favor of uh, c- keeping your gun rights and, as a matter of fact, even expanding them. And he also is in favor of limiting the Federal Reserve. He's in favor of states' rights. He thinks that the federal, uh, the federal government is out of control. He, he favors, as far as energy, uh, he, he, f- he favors coal-fired and nuclear-powered plants. He favors uh, exploration of additional oils, oil sands, oil shell in the United States, uh, relying upon ourselves rather than uh, and, and free trade. He is uh, opposed to the TTIP and the TPP, but he is pro-abortion. There are things that are on both sides of the issue. Uh, what do you think about the current elections uh, with, the, with uh, Mr. Trump, uh, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders? And these uh, optional candidates from the Constitution Party and the Libertarian Party, some people are saying this is the year of the Libertarian Party. What what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, thanks, Paul. Well, I'll start with my my usual caveat that I always offer before I ever say anything about presidential elections, and that is, uh, people, please don't get too attached to a presidential candidate and don't get demoralized when your candidate loses. Unfortunately, the establishment really controls the presidential election. I mean, they've accumulated all this power in the executive branch over a period of generations. They're not just going to let the American people you know, up and turn that around by choosing their candidate. If it looks like that Trump is going to win and they don't want Trump to win, they'll throw in a bunch of third-party candidates that will take support from him so that Hillary wins. You know, they, they have the presidential election on lock. Uh, but with that little caveat out of the way, <laughs> I'll say that, uh, you know, Gary Johnson, I think, is is a very decent candidate. Um, you know, he's taken a lot of positions that I agree with uh, on abortion. He says, uh, you know, he does seem to be pro-abortion, but he says, you know, the states can decide that. And that's really what the founders envisioned, right? Murder 
is a state issue. We don't have, you know, federal laws against murder, except, you know, in a few uh, strange cases where the federal government has butted in. But state law criminalizes murder, and so the same should be true with murder of unborn babies. And so, he's, you know, he's correct on that issue and a number of others. Uh, but I have some concerns that, uh, you know, he might be being used by elements of the establishment to potentially derail uh, a Trump campaign if, you know, if Trump really is this anti-establishment hero that he's uh, being portrayed by, by, uh, you know, some of the people in the alternative media and some of the people in the establishment you know, media. I wonder if this is a, a Ross Perot move to split the vote and defeat the Republican Party. It may well be. And, you know, you have the neocon uh, Council on Foreign Relations wing of the Republican Party, uh, the people like uh, William Crystal and these other neocons, you know, former uh, Trotskyites who tried to take over the Republican Party. They're threatening now to run a third-party candidate. They're threatening to put together a third-party. <laughs> really, actually, they're talking about Mitt Romney, believe it or not, uh, you know, as if uh, we didn't get our lesson with uh, what happens when you run uh, an establishment so-called moderate Republican. But uh, what it would do is it would split the vote. It would allow Hillary Clinton to go in. And really, Hillary Clinton has much more in common with uh, the establishment wing of the GOP than, say, conservatives would have with the establishment wing of the GOP. But, uh, you know, I, I, I really think people should focus on uh, congressional races, state legislature, county commission. That's where we can have a real impact. Oh, good. Uh, you know, it's fine, I think, to support a, a candidate for the good, presidential good. election, but I just don't want people demoralized when yeah. their candidate doesn't win. And we should be focusing on the, the local level. Even they can bring some things about, and the sheriffs and our local, local prosecutors and others, legislators. Exactly. Uh, let, we've, yep. got, we've only got about uh, two, two and a half minutes left. Let's see if we can get two, a couple, of, at least two calls in between now and then. Go ahead, uh, uh, Eric, you're on the, the air with uh, with our wonderful weekly host. Alex, Alex Newman, Newman, I thought your expose on wh how the TPP and these other tra trade agreements threaten the U.S. Constitution was one of the best exposés I've heard in 20 years listening on K Talk. Very, very well spoken. What was the name of the movie or the video that you helped put together um, on oh. that? Uh, that's just a video that I made for the New American Magazine. If you go to the newamerican.com, you'll find it there. It's under uh, the World News, and it should be under uh, how the TTIP threatens U.S. sovereignty and self-government. You got it. And I do get the New American Magazine have for years. It's the best single one that I get. I think it explains things better than anything else. And, of course, you write in there as well. Um, the yeah, reason well, I was calling, so the main reason, it. is you're, you're pointing out how these third-party runs um, – allow the establishment to get in their person. And there was a caller an hour or so ago who was talking about, hey, voting for the lesser of two evils is still evil. You should vote third party. I think that's very really naive. And people who are really constitutionally minded like that, they need to kind of wake up and realize that they can spend their whole life here getting involved in libertarian and constitution party as good people in, in, the, in the state of Utah and other states, I'm sure, as well. And they're wasting their time, and they're letting the, re the Democrats who really have super uber socialistic candidates win again and again while us people who are staying in the mainstream republican party fighting with all we got to try and get the 60 percent um vote count or higher in the convention to keep um a challenger who might be popular with the with the general population who's ignorant such as robert bennett from actually making it onto the ballot republican ballot we're sitting here wishing these people were over joining us in the Republican Party to help fight, to get, in some cases, what's the lesser two evils, but this is not an evil versus evil. It's politics, and you have to take the lesser course if that's the best path okay. to actually getting something. That's just how a republic works. All right, a compromise. Go ahead. Uh, appreciate you calling in, Eric. Uh, you know, I... Tony, I'm going to let you on. You've got, honestly, 17 seconds. Can you make a point real quick? So here's the alternative view for Venezuela. Uh, the people were getting nothing under the uh, international oil corporations, so the government nationalized it, and now they're feeling the wrath of the kickback of the international uh, bankers and oil companies saying, hey, you can't do this we want it all so you're going to get less than nothing they're destabilizing the government with the assets of the cia and the banking establishment just an alternative there's good evidence thanks. that the president was assassinated oh, yes. thanks for your call again thanks for being with us alex sorry we ran out of time every week
Appreciate you coming Thanks, on. Paul. Hi, this is Alan Appreciate Boyd it. with Capital Financial. Thank you. With home values increasing and low rates still available, now is the perfect time to refinance your home. Capital Financial Group, we have loan programs to fit your refinance needs, whether you want to pull cash out from your home, decrease your interest rate and monthly payment, or just reduce your loan to a 15-year payoff. We have programs that will help you refinance even if your income or credit is less than it used to be or if you're underwater on your mortgage. Instead of getting lost in the shuffle of a big bank or 